Welcome to Potty Mouths. This is Stephanie. This is Brad. And if you're wondering why nobody else is saying this is Bert, <laughs> this is Bert ruined everything by having to go on second shift. <laughs> Poor Bert. For a month. I'm not going to lie. At first, I was like, this is crap. Now we get to spend time together in the morning, and then he goes to work, and then I stay up late, and then we get to hang out and watch TV and stuff in the evening, but now I'm on first and second shift, so every night I'm rolling four or five hours of sleep. Good for you. I mean, I'm getting shit done at all hours. Yeah. And I get to spend time with good old Bert, and I have a backup in case I have to use the bathroom when my son's bus comes, because without fail... My alarm will glow, go off to put the youngest on the bus, and I'll be like, shit, I have to pee. Every time. <laughs> Every single time. It's like the pee alarm. I'm mentally programmed now. But, uh, so, when is, is it next week? Next Thursday? What? I don't even know what fucking day it is. Yeah, next Thursday, right? What? For Valentine's Day. I don't know. I don't do Valentine's Day. I don't, Jesus, I feel like we should know what day um, we're going to talk about well, it. Well, let's see, today's the 6th, so yeah, what we're doing on a Wednesday, next yeah, Thursday. Yeah, next Thursday, yeah. Next Thursday is Valentine's Day. So since Brad and I are just like, just rolling solo, I figured we could talk about Valentine's Day and all the glories that go with it. So what is your plans for Valentine's Day? Not, I don't celebrate it. You, you don't do the Hallmark, <laughs> Hallmark bullshit? No, listen, if Bert wants to buy me some chocolate, fuck yeah, I ain't keto, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. It's not a requirement. And to be honest, like... So what if he doesn't come with anything? You're not going to get uh, buttered no. at all? Not even like, maybe you should have just got me a card. Not, no. You're not one of them well, like, so don't give me anything. Away? Well, yes, yeah, I know. Cards are kind of a waste of money. Like, I don't even buy kids' birthday cards anymore. Yeah. Unless it's a holder for cash. <laughs> like it's kind of like yeah. they all say the same shit. You could just say that to me, and then I don't have to pretend like I want to keep this card when I'm trying to live this minimalist life where I don't hang on to shit. Yeah. Now I got this stack of cards that mean something to me, but then not really because all you did was stop on the way to my party, buy the fucking card, sign your name in it. I don't even know if you read it. Now I feel obligated to keep this thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that shit starts accumulating over the years. Yeah, doesn't that? I got to dump all my shit. Like. So, for my kids' first birthdays, I put the the birthday cards and their baby book and stuff like that. After that, Mm -hmm. like streamer from the baby shower, little stuff like that. But unless unless you're a hardcore scrapbooker, cards are kind of fucking useless. Yeah, with my hoarding tendencies, (laughs) I was like, because I did start saving them. And I'm like, yeah, I just don't have the room for this bullshit. Do you remember when... Wasn't it a couple of Valentine's Days? You and I were both rolling single. Yeah. And uh, didn't we just go out and get smashed with other singles? I'm pretty sure there have been smashed a lot of Valentine's Days. (laughs) I rolled a lot of Valentine's Day singles as well. Yeah. It never bothered me. Did it ever bother you? Never bothered me. Never. Uh, Now, see, like, I'd roll with my cousin, and he'd make a point to go out on Valentine's Day and find the love of his life, and we'd have to hear him whine all night about how we're single on valentine's day and i'm like dude shut the fuck up i don't even care yeah it's like dude you're the one making this production of it like recently he got engaged and i have to he's like oh sorry man like you're the last one standing i'm like what are you talking about like for one i don't even ever think of that and two i mean like what are you trying to do here like brag or rub it in my face that you're getting fucking engaged i don't know like i don't know how to take it like that is kind of shitty first of all well i mean for one i don't give a fuck i was like two congratulations what do you want i mean like i don't understand like his and approach towards he, that he, you're not the last one rolling because his brother's fucking divorced out there <laughs> looking to, to find yeah. some scattered ass not to mention that but did he buy her a ring um i don't think he did and she they probably stole it or got it off somebody. Cause so, I, they're, I mean, they say engaged, but... Yeah, they live at their friend's house, and I don't think either one of them has a job. So, congrats to you, buddy. <laughs> I'm proudly will be the Sounds last one Sounds like a beanie weenie wedding to me. Oh, it will be. Look, and there's nothing wrong with being broke. 
because Bert and I, we were trying to plan this expensive ass wedding, and then I'm, I, I was like, I can't spend mm-hmm. thousands of dollars for people to eat and drink that I probably won't ever fucking see. So we just elope, man. Yeah, I, I think it's those big weddings are a waste of money. It totally. Like, sure. I mean, if somebody wants to waste the money on it, I guess I'll. Sh- I- I hate going to weddings, honestly. I think, like, you spend half the fucking time in line waiting for your food. Now, if, and if you're in the fucking wedding, you spend half the night getting pictures. No, and then you spend three fucking months at all the parties yeah. and all the get-togethers and the shopping sessions and the meetings and the dress fittings. Yeah, and it's like, well, they want to spend their thousands, but it ended up costing me hundreds, if not close to a thousand, with all the bullshit when it's said and done. I with. was in three weddings in one summer. Ugh. It was one of the worst summers of my life. I bet. Oh my god, I hate them. Like, well, I gotta say, one of my friends, she just like, look, it's fall wedding colors. Uh, here's your color. Go find a dress. No. Yeah. Um, which I appreciated because she gave me red. Well, burgundy. Which is fine, because I think I look fantastic in burgundy. And she told me to find a dress. Now, I know this is a podcast, and people can't see, but I'm a little hefty up top. (laughs) So when they're, like, strapless, I'm like, I can't go strapless. What spaghetti strap? Nah, if it involves a strapless bra, I'm fucking out. So then they gotta fucking pick out a dress. (laughs) And if it has sleeves, and it's a bridesmaid's dress, it looks like a mother of the bride dress. There are no fucking cute bridesmaids dresses with fucking sleeves. <laughs> and I'm like, they defy, they don't defy gravity, man. Gravity comes down fucking hard on these bad boys. <laughs> I have to wear a bra of some sort, whether it's around the neck or regular or whatever. And then if you don't want my bra showing, don't get fucking sleeveless. Oh, what about one shoulder? Then you're going to have one bra strap sticking out of my fucking dress. Yeah, and I guess for me, I'm like seven foot tall, and I've got a nice gut, and nothing fucking ever fits me. I remember your fiasco with finding a vest. Oh my god, yeah, so it's the night before the wedding, and I try on this vest, and I'm getting, I'm one of the groomsmen in this wedding the following day. This fucking vest is nowhere near close to fitting me. And it's not like I can go pop in somewhere and have it fucking, you know, it's there. Yeah, because nobody even does alterations anymore. And you know, I'm, I'm like, oh my god, this, this sucks. And well, luckily, it all did come together, and it ended up actually being one of my favorite suits I ever wore in a wedding. But yeah, that was that was a fucking nightmare because I'm like, oh man, I'm ruining this dude's wedding because you got bridesmaids to match with the groomsmen so i'm fucking somebody you know and they have this all worked out and this is one of these ten thousand dollar fucking weddings so yeah see i mean if if you if it if it's if it means that much to you by all means have a big wedding yeah it's just not a requirement for i am simple as fuck Fuck. I'd rather take that and put it down on a house or take right? a vacation. Yeah. Like, we didn't have the money. If we had tried to save the money, we'd have been out on so much shit. I mean, and like, I don't know. Just, I feel like if you have to say it that loudly, you're not standing on a good. Like, if if the one time your dude thinks of you is on Sweetest Day and Valentine's Day, is he worth dating? And, like, if he fucks up Valentine's Day... Look, first of all, I don't even know when Sweetest Day is, ever. No. It'll come past me and be like, oh, no wonder all these people are out. It's Sweetest Day. We don't even know. We're fucking Yeah, Jimmy, I think the only way I know is some fucking asshole posts about it on Facebook. Look like, at my baby got it for me for Sweetest Day. Yeah, I'm like, that is oh. worse than Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, okay, I can get behind the Valentine's Day, but Sweetest Day, give me a fucking break. I mean, I get it. It's a celebration of love. And I tell you what, I like the little cute little valentine's parties at school i actually yeah. spent more on my kids valentine stuff for his teacher and his classmates than i've ever spent on a dude on Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah. but i mean then love is cute but well, yeah, like it's for the kids bert doesn't have to i mean first of all if i want chocolate i'm an adult i'll go get it my fucking self i'm surprised i haven't bought a box of heart chocolates already well and then, then yeah you're at that age where it's like you're just trading money or, like, yeah, go get what you fucking want. Like, unless I mean, it's, like, some handmade shit. Is there really much thought behind it? Like, oh, no, I want this movie like, or this CD. I, you know, I tell you what. Like, all right, 
you really want to know what I want for Valentine's Day? Go out there and organize the fucking shed. <laughs> Get your tools out of the lawn. You want to do something for me that I need? Uh, laundry. Put it away. Switch over loads for me. I don't need gifts. Uh, the, the extent of Bert and I, like every now and again for an important holiday, he'll be like, Hey, get something off your wish list on Amazon. And I'm like, sweet. Hell yeah. 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 That's, that's kind of cool. But yeah. I, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm too simple for the whole. And then the going out to dinner thing, they're going to be packed. Oh yeah. Who would want to go out anytime? Like you know what we from do? that Thursday till that Sunday. Do you know what we do for what we've done for Valentine's day since my sister and I have had kids? What's up? We take the kids to Chuck E. Cheese on Valentine's Day oh, really? because all the couples have babysitters and they're out and Chuck E. Cheese is deserted. <laughs> so every Valentine's Day Saturday, we take idea. the kids to Chuck E. Cheese. Nice. So you guys will just have the run of the place. Yeah. Yeah. No snot nosed little kids pushing my kid over. And yeah. That's not a bad idea. Not having to wait in an hour and 15 minutes for bad pizza. I'm sorry. <laughs> Those that enjoy the pizza at Chuck E. Cheese. I'm not a fan. I'm just not. I haven't had it in so long. I remember it used to be pretty good, but everything used to be pretty good. Yeah. Pizza Hut used to be pretty good. Now Pizza Hut's just like eating frozen fucking pizza. Yeah. Honestly, if it's not stuffed crust from Pizza Hut, it's crap. Yeah. And I was so happy when Long John Silver's came back, but their hot and ready's are bullshit. I... Now, a deep dish and long and uh, Little Caesar's wings are the shit. Yeah. A deep dish Little Caesar's is pretty good. Yeah. But those $5 hot and ready's are. Kind of crap. Yeah. Papa John's used to be good. Now they have the driest crust I've ever experienced in my life, whether you dip it in the garlic butter or not. I feel like when Little Caesars came back, they just, all the other joints found cheaper ways to make pizza. Right. And then Pizza Hut went all express now. I like going into a restaurant, ordering pizza, and sitting down and eating it. Mm-hmm, I, do too. I miss, do you remember the red textured I do. cups from Pizza Hut? Oh, yeah. And the Pizza Hut in our neighborhood when I was little, I'd always go in there and I'd take a shitload of quarters with me and they had the one arcade. video game in there and it was aliens versus predator nice i play the shit out of that <laughs> pizza hut man well and then dewey's i've never had dewey's Dewey's is delicious but it's like a thousand dollars for a pizza really i mean it's worth it but then again it's 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 a bougie way to eat pizza it's like you can't let your kids run around and i'm pizza hut buffet like yeah i mean I remember going to Pizza Hut as a kid, and you would let the kids run around, hang over by the arcade games and shit. Don't they don't have that shit anymore, do they? No. I, I mean, guess Chuck E. Cheese. No, you but, have to drop three hundred dollars at a, at one of these big arcade oh, complexes. Yeah, like uh, what are they called? Um, Dave and Buster's. Yeah, Dave or, and Buster's and stuff. And that's a three hundred dollar afternoon to stuff your kid full of pizza and arcade games wow. that they have to stand in line for. Glad I only have turtles. <laughs> well, that's why we don't go often. Yeah. We go like once a year, but like eat it up because we're broke the rest of the year. That'd be more like a fucking like this is fuck, this is your Christmas present. Like enjoy. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we do. We're if we're gonna spend money, it's not to get stuff; it's to go do things. Yeah, that's our thing. That's what, whenever we talk about getting a house, we don't want to be house poor. Yeah, we want a decent house, but we still want to be able to leave the house. Yeah, I like uh, spending money on experiences a lot more, you know, like traveling and trying new things. Now, if one year for Valentine's Day, Bert's like, we're going to Ireland, I'd be like, hell yeah, now that's a Valentine's Day. But if it's like, here's a card that I didn't even read and some chocolates, I'd be like, well, thanks for the chocolates, you didn't have to get me the card. (laughs) Amen to that. And then most dudes just want sex. If you ask a guy what he wants for Valentine's... Don't chicks want that? I mean, sometimes. Sometimes Mother Nature just has other plans for you. Well, like, so Valentine's Day lines up and Mother Nature is being kind. I mean, I mean it's a plus, we, right? I mean, you've been together two, three, seven fucking years. Yeah. And you have sex whenever you want. Yeah, true I mean, that. you might turn it up a little bit on the holidays, but honestly... If I'm in the mood for some weird shit, we're going to do some weird <laughs> shit. I don't care what day it is. What's out the fucking ball gag? I know, I know. Because you know how I am about people telling me to shut up. <laughs> 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 or be quiet. <laughs> There's no way that's ever happening. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that makes me unromantic. 
Yeah, I don't know. I know people that get all into it, and then there's us, and then... I don't, I don't know. know. I guess everyone's just got their things, right? Well, I mean, like, we're not, like, our, our wedding situation. Bert and I met January 1st. So when we were trying to plan this elaborate wedding, we're, we're halfway there. It takes, like, a year and a half to plan a wedding now. So we're six months away from what we think is going to be our wedding date. And mm-hmm. Bert looks at me and he goes, fuck it. Let's just elope and go get married on the first. It's our anniversary anyway. And that was like the sweetest thing ever. And I was like, fuck yes. Let's go do it. And then like when Mother Nature does bitch slap me, Bert will show up at the door with a Coca-Cola and some Reese cups. <laughs> Every now and then when he knows that I'm just, I want to choke fuckers out. And that's that's sweeter than just thinking about me on Valentine's Day. Yeah, true that. But also, I raid the Valentine's chocolate aisle the day after Valentine's Day. Get those Reese cups. And I've been in a caramel ass mood. Usually, it's chocolate and peanut butter. I've been chocolate and caramel. Whoa, what's some good chocolate and caramel? Uh, caramellos. Those are pretty good. Rolos, Rolo mm. ice cream is delicious. By the way, mm, that would get me in trouble. Even just those little square caramels, which, by the way, everybody out there getting triggered by me saying caramel. <laughs> How? Why? Why would they be triggered? Is this a new word we're not allowed to use? This fuck at fucking UDF once. <laughs> caramel is spelled C A R A M E L. Mm-hmm. That is not caramel. So if an ice cream has the word caramel in it, I'm going to pronounce it caramel. And when you correct me car- or caramel, if I say caramel and you correct me caramel and it's spelled caramel, it took me like every bit of adult in me not to jump across this counter and bitch slap this little kid in the face. So you do get triggered by caramel <laughs> and caramel. Yeah. <laughs> Don't correct me. If it's got two A's in it, it's caramel. I know how to fucking read. If it only has one A in it, it's caramel. And there's a difference. Are you sure you're pronouncing it right? Yes. (laughs) If it's nice and gooey and like you can stick your spoon down in it and it drizzles, it's caramel. Mm. If it's hard, it's a caramel. Oh, wow. See, I didn't even know that. (laughs) That, Well, that's my justification from it. And I dare anybody to fucking talk to me about this. And if you didn't pronounce them differently, there wouldn't be two fucking spellings of the goddamn word. So the caramel is the hardened form of caramel. Yeah. Wow. To me, anyway. Like, when I buy those little, you know, those little square caramels? Mm -hmm. On the bag, it says caramel, not caramel. But caramellos are pronounced caramello because you bite into it and it's... Silky fucking magma caramel <laughs> in your mouth. Now I want a fucking caramello. Oh my god. They're so good. But anyway, people. Two A's, it's caramel. One A, it's caramel. But no matter how the person pronounces it, don't crick motherfuckers at UDF. Because if they're off the diet bandwagon and they're getting some ice cream, something is happening in their lives. <laughs> Well, he, he probably didn't know you were off the, the diet ba- bandwagon. <laughs> I mean, that is true. But oh, also, shit. Also, I do not take kindly to snot nose, know-it-all, fucking 19-year-olds telling me how to pronounce things. Yeah, true. Kids are punks. <laughs> I live with a 17-year-old. Oh. They are punk ass as hell. I'd take six over 17 any day. Same here. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so against, like, I don't care what you do in life. I don't care if you're the biggest criminal dick on the planet. Don't hurt kids. Oh, yeah. Don't ever hurt kids. But <laughs> I've never wanted to punch anyone more in my life than when my 17-year-old gives me shit. <laughs> Yeah, I have a 12 year old nephew and I miss when he was six now he's just fucking rotten like oh god I can't stand it you it happens right about the, like 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 my oldest was like eight nine and Cute ten fucking kids and, love to be around yeah, him. and people are oh he's so good he's so sweet la 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 like 12 13 and I'm like who the fuck are you? Yeah. And who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> I and I turned into that Darren Knight guy, the Southern mama. Mm-hmm. She cut them eyes at me again. I tell I tell my oldest, I said, you roll them eyes at me, I'm going to roll them onto the floor. <laughs> like, I, I pull that mom saying shit on him all the time because it's all size, 
sarcastic ass sighs <laughs> and eye rolls. And like, like, he wants to act like he's not mad, but just the way he walks is sassy around me. <laughs> and I just want to like bash in his knee so he can't sassy walk at me. <laughs> Woo! Teenage years oh, is yeah. rough. Yeah, I'm glad I don't have to deal with my fucking nephew, so... My sister-in-law FaceTimed me, and her and her husband are trying to have a baby, and she we were on FaceTime when I got into an argument with the all, oldest, and I just looked her right now, I'm like, are you sure he want to do this? Because it's all fun and fucking games until they become teenagers. Yeah, really. Oh, man. But, speaking of teenagers, part of our little Valentine's Day thing was, I don't know where Brad's at on this. Sexting. I've done it. I've Brett farved a few girls. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually illegal now. It's illegal. Okay. For two minors, even if they're 14 and 16, sexting is illegal under 18 in most states. I think it's like 26 states or some shit. And how do they find out that they've sexted and what are the punishments? So uh, I don't know about other parents, but I checked my kid's phone. Yeah, you probably should check your So there was phones. an incident with a woman that lived across the street. She found out her 11-year-old daughter was sending nudes. Jesus Christ. 11? 11. For one, I'm just trying to think why 11-year-old even has a fucking well, phone. Well, I actually looked it up, and according to the internet, <laughs> uh, like, over-sexuality in young age is actually a sign of bipolar disorder. Really? So, like, you think, you know, this is why I'm... And, like, people argue with me. I don't give a fuck. My oldest didn't get a cell phone until he was 16. I gave him a cell phone for Christmas after he turned 16. Because there ain't no fucking 14, 13-year-olds need to be out there roaming free with unlimited fucking minutes and shit. Yeah, really? I'm so 11 years old sending nudes. I'm trying to... Do 11-year-olds, why are they even Look, thinking? Like, do they even have... I think have... it's because they have such access to learn this shit. When I was yeah. 11, first of all... Have 11-year-olds most... even hit puberty? I was going to say that. I started my period when I was 11 on Halloween fucking day of all days. But I was <laughs> so naive. I was happy. I was like, I'm a woman now. Like, And then like three months later, I'm like, I'm done with this shit. Where's menopause? Yeah. It's fucking <laughs> horrible. But, like, I was the first one. Most of my friends didn't even start till they were, like, 13. How yeah. the fuck do you, like, that? that's supposed to come with your ability to make fucking babies. Mm-hmm. 11 is kind of early for a period. And then, like, why are women out there instinctively trying to get knocked up in their teens? Oh, this world's so fucked up. <laughs> I know. 11, man. And got people out there, like, I know that your f- kids' friends all have cell phones, Hold out, man. Yeah, for Hold real. out. Like I said, I didn't give mine a cell phone till he was 16. I don't know. And then it becomes just so convenient. And you can use it for a... Well, they they think they're going to use it as a leash with these kids, but in, it ends up being their sexting devices, you know? Yeah, like, and then, like, there's all these apps. And then, like, the people out there creating... You know the calculator app? Mm-hmm. Where it looks like a calculator, but it's where it's, you can keep all your nudes and shit? I've heard about it. So... You people out there creating apps like that, kids are using this. Kids. That's why I check my kids' phone constantly. If there's two calculators in there, and then they use these little social apps and stuff like Kick, mm-hmm. that K-I-K, whatever, to talk smack and what, uh, nah, nah. So how do you go about checking your kid's phone? Do you do uh, it like- I bought it. I put the password on it. So do you tell them, like, let me check your phone? I just go in there and take it. <laughs> this is like a military random ass inspection. I'll just go in his room and grab it. Now, does this continue until he starts paying the phone bill or when he turns 18? When he's 18, I don't have to pay child support for anything that he rears. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> when he's 18, I'm not going to hold him back. He's going to learn real fucking quick yeah. what it means to be a fucking adult. And then if so if he's 18 and ends up fucking... <laughs> but because I had my children 11 years apart, he's like, I want no kids. He's like, that he is so annoying. Got to experience what it's yeah, like a little like bit. Like, he was there when I was changing diapers. Mm-hmm. He was there when I was up all night. He's there in and out of the car seat, in and out of the car seat, in and out of the car seat, carrying the car seat. 
me forgetting the diaper bag, me forgetting to put diapers in the <laughs> diaper bag, the wipes, the whole night. He was there for it all. And yeah, he's like, I'm not having thing. kids. If he decides at 26, 27, 28, he does, fine. But I'm hoping I put it off for at least, I don't know, <laughs> five to ten more years. Yeah. You don't have to give 13-year-old phones. Probably shouldn't, but in today's day and age, I mean. That's what they all want. Yeah. I mean, it's bad enough they get into trouble talking smack on fucking Xbox and you know, PlayStation. And I stuff. I honestly haven't seen a, a fucking kid. I cannot recall one like that doesn't have some sort of um, like you know because they watch YouTube and shit a lot and kids kids don't really play with action figures much like we used to because I mean you can kind of go into your own fucking world with these video games and shit. Parents don't let kids get bored anymore. Yeah. Now it's like they, they they have to fill their every day with something, and kids act like it's the end of the world if they just have to sit in their room. Because, <sighs> honestly, have they done it? Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they've never been I, bored. I, I've seen fucking some of my friends' kids, two years old and shit, like, already gravitating towards the fucking phones and now, shit. I I bought my youngest a tablet. He's allowed to have the tablet as long as nothing's going on. Mm-hmm. But when something's going on, and we take the kids to the park... And uh, there, another thing, too, my youngest does not get my phone when we're out at a restaurant or whatever. Yeah, don't open up that fucking wormhole. Yeah, my, uh, Bert does. Well, <laughs> he did. We, there was, we were at a low point when that thing was two, man. <laughs> Just trying to eat a meal without him losing his shit at a restaurant. Really? So there was a short period of time where he got the phone when we were eating just to shut him up. Yeah. But, and that was, honestly, I will let my kids scream. I don't care. Look at me. I'm not condoning that behavior by rewarding a child for acting up in a store or a restaurant. But we were asked to leave twice. Yeah, sometimes you just want to, you just defeat it. And you just want to fucking enjoy a meal. And, like, I get that you're (laughs) out trying to, you know, enjoy your meal, too. But also, I'm trying to teach lessons. Yeah. Like, you're just trying to have a nice casual dinner. I'm trying to have that, too, while also having to teach daily lessons to my children about not being spoiled or rotten little shitheads. (laughs) I get it. I get it, but... Like, every time I see some woman pushing her kid around in a cart at a store, and that kid's just losing his shit, and she's just ignoring him... I'll give her that look, like, I've been there, man. You know, that it, it'll get better look, you know. But as long as she's ignoring that kid, you you continue. Continue on. You're doing good work to make sure that that <laughs> kid doesn't grow up and be a jerk. Besides the sexting among teenagers, I actually, it was that incident with the 11-year-old that had me look up, like, because each state has their own little laws to look up what actually is specifically illegal. And in a lot of states, if you are under the age of 18, whether it's consensual or not, and you are sending nudes and sexting, it is illegal. For under 18. For under 18. Now, if you're over 18 and it's consensual, it's legal. But if you're sending someone else's nudes to someone else, it's the distribution of pornography. And in a lot of states, it is illegal. And then if you're doing it to get back into somebody, there's now laws in certain states against what they call revenge porn. Wow. Which I appreciate. Because there's nothing worse than being a woman and trusting a man and sending him something and then you guys break up and now you're on your vagina's on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. This is why this is why I don't believe in nudes. Like, oh like mom, it's it's I'm a consensual adult until you're on the internet. All right. <laughs> Until you're on the internet. Also, I don't understand it. If you're already seeing each other naked, I don't know. Sometimes it's kind of hot, like especially when you're at work and you're like, "Yeah, send me some tit pics," or you know, yeah, to I get them geared up. So you I don't know. I mean, it's this, it's kind of like because yeah, I've been in a it was a shorter relationship, so I guess it hadn't ran its course yet, and I was still. Well, I mean, yeah, but I, I, I got had, pretty excited over it. So. I've had you know. Highly sexual conversations and stuff, but can can I tell you a secret? <laughs> this may uh, ruin sexting for you. So in the past, I've been asked for nudes, and I've sent them. 
But they weren't of me. <laughs> <laughs> you can just Google nipple. We'll see. Tip pick. <laughs> Vagina. And what was like the dude's response? That's so hot. And That's I'd so like hot. play it off like oh, it's me. Yeah. She ain't me. See, I- so like if that like under the name comes out and I know. I don't care if other people know. If my nipple, my quote unquote nipple shows up on some whatever, they're like, yeah, this is Stephanie's nipple. I know it's not my <laughs> nipple, so I don't give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, I would just get, um, before all these laws came into effect, I'd just get drunk and at like 4 a.m., every chick in my phone would get pissed. You know what? You, <laughs> I hate to say this on the pod, but we're just going to say it. You only send me pictures of shit in the toilet. <laughs> You've never sent me an unsolicited dick pic. It's always of a mountain of shit in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Not everyone gets those. <laughs> I mean, I guess you have to be on a certain level to get Brad dick pic. But now it's considered harassment to send an unsolicited dick pic. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that in years, though. But, I mean, this is my mid-20s, so... I'm 35 now. So actually, Kentucky and Ohio do not have laws against revenge porn. Kentucky, Ohio, where are you? Like everybody else, almost everybody else does. Kentucky, Ohio, where are you? I've I've gotten plenty of nudes over there. I don't think I've posted them anywhere. I mean, maybe I showed it to a buddy, but it wasn't like, I never broadcasted it to the fucking world. Right, which I think... I mean, it's hard for, like, a dude not to to get a picture of a good-looking set of boobs and not show it to your friends. I think this was mainly in case, and I can't remember who it was. Like, there were these sleazy fucking photographers trying to catch celebrities and shit, Mm -hmm. naked or in the shower or whatever, and then selling their fucking pictures to people and stuff. Yeah, that's just wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's totally fucking wrong. And it is kind of revenge porn. It's in, like, it's one thing to, you know, like, make a copy of porn and give it to your buddies, but it's quite another for people to be passing around, like... That's what that porn star does for a living. She takes off her clothes and has sex for a living. This mm-hmm. poor woman, that's not what she does for a living. And yeah. now her tits and ass are all <laughs> over, whatever. And she trusted you at that time. She sent that. So, yeah. You know, like, and, and like, I, I get guys can be salty shit. And women, you know, you know, you've seen all those pictures and shit where women fucking up dudes' cars for cheating and stuff. We all get hot and bothered and crazy and turn a little bit psycho during a breakup. But l- leave the nudes. Yeah. No matter how bad the breakup is, at some point you liked and trusted that individual. Mm-hmm. Not to mention that, I'm sure you don't want to go to jail. Yeah. If you were just some random dude, girls nowadays, like, you should know better that it might potentially leak on the internet. So don't do that unless you know the fucking guy. So. Yeah, and like, I hate to say it now, but dating, like, oh my god. If Bert left me, I would probably go full on like single, never dating again, because I swear to God, like if you're not eating ass on the third date, like <laughs> are you even a sexual being nowadays? I, from the sounds of it, if you're not into ass play in this day and age, you are a fucking lost cause. I like your I like my sex vanilla as hell. Yeah, like I don't want anything in my ass. Yeah. I mean... I'm not wearing anything that's going to give me a yeast infection. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not putting anything that's not a man inside of me. (laughs) Yeah. I I just prefer the uh, vanilla stuff as well. I I see these pictures of people, like, I know you've seen them, where, like, people are pulling light bulbs and stuff out of their ass, and I'm like, (laughs) why? What? What? And, and and but it's not deviant behavior; it's normal behavior. <laughs> Guess so. <laughs> I just I don't understand. Well, I mean, what just happened to good old fashioned sex? The times are changing. Man, I don't get it. It's not like the uh, early two thousands anymore. <laughs> I guess not. I don't know. But like somebody said something like, "I I can't I could not trust a man that wanted to stick his mouth on my butthole." <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I could not take a man that wanted to eat my ass seriously. I could not. (laughs) Why? Why do you want that? And then, like, a dude's beg chicks for... Why? Trying to 
give a response. I, I've got, no, I've got it's just nothing. what I'm into. How do you get into that? Not you have a vagina there, and you'd rather fucking stick your tongue in a butthole. In a butthole. I'm sorry. Like my vagina is fairly inactive most of the time. Okay, it does its thing once a month, and every now and then, when I allow it to, it has a baby. My butthole is in full activity all day, every day. <laughs> exactly. Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. It's busy. <laughs> I mean, there's just and and it's from experience with doing that butthole stuff that I know when you got a vagina there just use the fucking thing <laughs> I mean and then like I don't understand why girls aren't getting upset that their vaginas aren't good enough anymore I've had some They're, girls that are they just they would let me I, I do it cause I do it cause he <laughs> likes it and at what point did your relationship become so one sided does he do things that he doesn't like that's what I always ask my my lady friends when they're like, oh, it's a horrible experience, blah, 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 but he really wanted it. I'm like, have you made him do anything that he didn't want to do? I, I, I've been with some that liked it. I've been I mean, with some I, that I mean, don't I've, anywhere near it. I've met a time or two, a woman's been like, yeah, it's great, but like, I don't know. I get that guys like it. See, but like when you've done it and it's you pull your unit out and it's covered in feces, you're like, why? Why did I ever do that? <laughs> we we get a little up close and personal now that this has turned into the sex episode. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Don't eat ass. Yeah. <laughs> and get a box of chocolates. We get a little up close and personal, us ladies, at these pure romance parties. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, and I'm not going to say... I, I have plenty of friends who've done some, in my personal opinion, some sketchy sexual shit, you know? But I never, like, I'm not going to be your friend because you're gross or whatever. Mm. I mean, to each his own, man. I mean, I'm going to ask questions because I want to know, like, why, you know? Somebody asked me once why I'm so against anal sex. And now, again, to each his own. But to me, the mental image of poop being in my butt and then coming out of my butt and then being placed back in my butt repeatedly. <laughs> I just can't get past that can't mental image. That. I just can't do it. Like once it's out, it stays out. It doesn't go back in. You don't take poop out of the butt and then put it back in. Oh, well, you clean. I don't care. Well, well, now, what if you knew you wouldn't have that? No, I don't care how deep you clean. I mean. Because I recently asked the gay dude what they do about that. And they say they use an enema, get it all cleaned out. I'm sorry, if I have to do something like an enema to have sex, like, I I mean, I I get if somebody's really into that. I mean, honestly, we should all probably take better care of our buttholes. (laughs) But what happens if it's spur of the moment and you didn't do an enema that day? You might have a corn cob on your cock. (laughs) I just, I don't... I mean, I know some ladies who enjoy this, okay? But then again, I know some ladies that won't give a blowjob to save their life. Yeah. But I don't have a problem with that. I mean, as long as I'm in the mood. I have to be in the mood for whatever in the fuck it is. Anyway, I, I know I know women that, that enjoy the anal play. I just, it is not for me in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. It's just, and then like, I think women get shocked sometimes, the ones that know me. When they hear me say that, because I'm fairly open. Like, I talk about whatever. There's no reason to lie. There's no reason to hold back shit. Like, I mean, we're all adults. We all do what we do, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not volunteering overly sexual information, but if somebody asks me something and we're having a conversation about it or whatever, we're all adults. It's all, it's normal. But they, they think that because I'm, like, very open about things that I'm also open to other things and that's just ain't that's just not who I am like the BDSM stuff the hell's that the the bondage type oh, stuff yeah I just first of all leather and latex is uncomfortable yeah and it doesn't deal well with body sweat <laughs> and it makes funny noises and the whips and stuff like if I wanted somebody to bust my ass I'd just get into a fight yeah. I don't find it arousing. I don't either. And bitch, you pull my hair, you're looking for a fight. <laughs> and the whole talking dirty thing. I don't know. There's some words that just bother me. <laughs> I never enjoyed that. I was never good at it. I always just kind of felt like uncomfortable. Like, uh, I, don't I don't. I don't know. And uh, I guess I'm boring. 
I don't know. I, I can't. I, we don't have Bert here to ask him if I'm boring because he would tell the truth about whether or not I'm boring. He would probably say I'm boring, and I would be okay with that. <laughs> I would be okay with that. But, I mean, we've been together seven years. Yeah. Getting late is not a priority at this point. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine it. So, I mean, He's here every day. It's not even a priority for me, and I'm single, so. I'm mean, right. We're almost 40. Yeah. How how much do you fight for it I, before it's not even important anymore? I honestly don't even really think about it anymore. I, like, got my other things and my doings, and I'm so fucking busy. Like, I don't have time to sit and, like... I, I told Bert once that our relationship will be perfect once we're both too old to have sex. Because then it's just we don't even have to worry about it. Yeah. Like, it's just one thing, one other thing that I don't think anybody should have to worry about. Well, look, I, I mean, I have my urges, too. I get the dudes have more urges more often than women. Well, don't they say when you're, the women get more fucking horned up when they're 40s and shit? Okay, so I can't personally say for me because uh, I have, um, I guess you could say genetic disorders that make hormones a problem for me. Mm-hmm. The hypothyroidism and the PCOS and stuff. I have, like, almost no hormones. I don't even have enough hormones to make a baby right now. Like, my body just doesn't work in that way. So, and the older you get, the worse it gets. So, I can't say. Now, knowing my normal friends who don't have hormone issues, I don't know. I, I think most of the women that I know... That are, I mean, it's like as soon as they got into their 30s, sex was not a priority anymore. And the ones that do still make sex a priority were sluts at 18 and are sluts today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and a sex equals love for them, and that's how they get it. That's kind of like what, with my experiences with women, the ones that were... Overly sexual. Or were the like, fucking whore bags. You know? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, just putting out and doing what... I mean, the, the the women... And I hate to say it, look. I mean, if you want to have sex, have sex. Yeah. But, like, it's almost like they do it in a really unhealthy way. Mm-hmm. It's to be liked, to be popular, to get somebody, to keep somebody. It's not just like, oh, I'm a horny woman, I want to have sex. It's, it's like, it's some deep-seated issues that have never been addressed. Yeah. And, like, it's sad, too, because where, like, if you're a good friend, you'll say something. But, like, if you're a dude out to get laid, you don't care under what context it is. No. Most men that I know. I haven't ever met a dude out on a mission to get laid that gave a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, why would they? I mean, it, it is, uh, and I, I hate to be that, that person, but uh, most dudes aren't going to turn it down even if they know that the woman is just. Fuck no. Why would they? I mean, I, I mean, in 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 a moral world, yeah, but well, we're not talking about morality. Well, you just, like explain a situation that they would be aware of this person's. They would have to pay. They would have to know, like history, really, and they don't. They yeah, don't. That, now, that information now, isn't presented to them. Now, now, see, that's a different story, and I feel if you know that person that well, you're probably not fucking her to begin with, you know? Right, so, on a regular basis yeah. anyway. But, like, you know, these dudes that keep going back to these side chicks that just are always using sex for gain or whatever, honestly, and, and this, is, this is definitely, and coming from a female, I would be called a gender traitor, when you're a woman, you're like a goalie, Okay. If, if, if your vagina, if sex was a soccer game, you'd be a goalie. Yeah. Absolutely. And your job is to keep shit from getting in your goal. <laughs> Pretty and much. it's the man's job to constantly be trying to score. Yeah. Is that bullshit? Yeah. But hey, guess what? If you're a really good goalie, it doesn't fucking matter. That's right. And you get to choose what gets in there. The dudes don't always score, but you choose. You're holding all the cards. So chicks can get it any time they want, man. Now, now that's not entirely true, because I've gone out on some drunken missions and never gotten laid before. Yeah, but I, I I'm aggressive how, what, intimidating, though. What, I wonder how you presented yourself, to, if you even did, you know. And sometimes, like when I was single, I'd sit around and just see if people would approach me. Yeah. And then that doesn't always work, because I, I have some things against me. One, I have resting bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> Two, I have been told that even just my presence is intimidating as hell. I think I'm an easygoing person. Apparently, uh, not so much. 
Never had any issues hanging out with you. I know, but you met me at freshman year of high school. True. When I was shy as fuck. I'll never remember you being shy. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, most of my friends today are like, yeah, when I first met you, I was afraid to talk to you. I thought you were going to be an uber bitch and you were going to be all mean and stuff. And then you end up being this really nice person. I'm like, I know. All right. <laughs> I think I'm friendly. I feel like I'm approachable. I don't... I mean, I talk a lot of mad shit on the pod, but in general, like, I love you. Love me, too. Let's be friends. You know? Like... Yeah, I've never uh, seen any anybody have any ill will. I've yeah, never I've, seen I've never seen anybody be like, oh, no, don't bring that Stephanie girl around. Because, you know, people tell tell you, yeah, I was going to invite you, but so-and-so doesn't like you. Be honest with me. But, like, it doesn't... I don't think people are anti-me once they get to know me. But yeah, I don't I don't get hit on a bars like ever. It's happened like twice and once was this old dude and it was my birthday and he just grabbed me and kissed me and it was fucking weird. <laughs> and he had a full on beard and he was like seventy. Sweet. <sighs> yeah, that was interesting. And then one was an ex. And that one I wanted to turn into a one night stand and then he basically stalked me until I dated him. I I have a magnetic personality once you get past the resting <laughs> bitch face. <laughs> But yeah, I just, I don't know. I think bars are horrible. Like, I mean, but where else do you go? Yeah, I mean, really, where do you go? They I, put out all these articles and shit, and they're like, oh, you know, the grocery store. No. I don't have the personality to pick up a chick at a grocery store, you know? And I, uh, as a woman, like, I'm not afraid to approach a dude, but I think women take rejection way more harshly than dudes do. Oh no, dudes take it pretty hard I'm, too. I, I have, I, you definitely, I can see that. There's a couple other guys that I know that would take rejection fairly hard, but there's like a whole lot of dudes that play the numbers game. Like if they hit on 20 chicks, 30 chicks, what are the odds? They don't give a shit about the rejection. True. They're just mindset on the goal. The <laughs> one out of fucking 20, the one out of 30 that they're taking home. I, I wish I had that approach and that, that confidence. <laughs> just like. I wish I had the approach that like, I wouldn't feel bad about myself if nobody ever approached me yeah but some of us are a little bit more um touchy than others i don't let it affect me but i do think about it like i realize it and i notice when people look at me when they don't look at me yeah but it doesn't bother me i've gotten to a point where i don't even think about it or give a shit like i really fucking don't i used to i'm gonna be honest yeah yeah but i don't know if i've just I don't know if it's with age or I've just desensitized to it all, but I literally do not give a fuck at all. I feel like it depends on the kind of woman you are, too. So, like, I know, and I hate women that say this, you can't be a girl and have guy friends. They just want to sleep with you or you just want to sleep with them. That mentality right there. That's a woman that feels rejected. Every dude they meet has to want to bang them. You know? That, that mental drive to make sure that every man on the planet wants a piece of them. Mm -hmm. Where I have always been comfortable as shit being dudes' friends. At one point in my life, I had more guy friends and girlfriends, and I wasn't banging a single one of them. And I didn't have to. And they didn't have to want to sleep with me, and I was not offended by it. Yeah. And when that group of guys would make like comments about my boobs, it was the least sexual thing ever. Because at some point, my boobs just became kind of a practical joke. <laughs> like an inside joke, just because how, like, monstrous they are. <laughs> and I've never had a normal nickname. Like, it's always been something involving boobs. What are some of my nicknames? Are Titzilla, Titonsters, Count um, Jugula. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I was about to say, but I wasn't exactly sure if that's, that was it or not. And, like, none of these do. They made fun of them, but they would make fun... I, I mentally thought of it like they made fun of how big my boobs were, the way that they would make fun of one of their guy friends who had, like, tiny balls. Yeah. I mean, it was it's that non-sexual. But now you can't even look at a chick's tits without being a predator and going to prison. Oh, God, I got my predator on at work today. <laughs> oh, my God, what happened at work today? Well, nothing. I mean, well, I, I was just trying not to stare and be a predator, and there's this gorgeous chick just standing right next to me and i'm just like god kill me i'm trying to look to the left she's to the right and i would just slowly look over every fucking 30 seconds look. or so <laughs> and it's just like natural but you can't do that nowadays here's my thing now 
If somebody was being grotesque about it or commented on it or tried to get up close to me or whatever, Mm -hmm. it would become an issue. But you can't help attraction. Just like I can't help picking up a pair of shoes in a store that I think are really fucking cute. Mm -hmm. Or stopping mid-sentence to check out an outfit that I really, really like. Or like going into the eye doctor and the hot butt doctor is there. Like my sister and I have the same eye doctor because, and we call him the hot butt doctor because he just has the most fabulous in shape butt we've ever seen. We don't want to have sex with him. He just has the perfect, the most perfect round butt of any dude or chick we've ever seen. Well, this chick today, I want to tell you had sex. <laughs> <laughs> But also, too, uh, even if she realized that you were looking, you can't help that. I know. And I and, was... and all these women that are like, just don't look. I, just don't breathe. What the fuck are you talking about? Because, like, people, I, one, of the, I, one of the reasons why I was told I was intimidating is because I make eye contact with people when I talk to them. Aren't you supposed to? I thought. like, Aren't you supposed to have engaging body language with somebody if you're interested in what they're saying? I try to make eye, eye contact. I'll break away after a while, but I, I try to make it. <laughs> I, if, I mean, I'll break away eye contact if, like, because I just, I look around. And mm. I, get, I get distracted as hell. I'm probably ADD as shit. But, like... If somebody's telling me something personal or upsetting or whatever, I'm going to look them right in the eye. I'm going to move in close to let them know, hey, I'm here. And if you're attracted to someone, you're going to look. You might even lean a little closer. And if you're trying not to be attracted, you're going to move away or stop looking. But holy shit, it is not sexist in the least to be attracted to a woman. Now, if you were going to follow her to her car and then, like... Pull a bing bong. Yeah, if you were going to stalk her, if you going to show up at her house drunk, covered in vomit, and play with her dog. <laughs> nah, it's just... Uh, like, my sister's had her fair share of stalkers before. Like, you didn't say anything to her. No, I was just, like, I- I've got this thing. I get around super hot chicks. I don't know. I get all, like, quiet and clammy. I'm like, oh, my God, like a little kid. <laughs> So she's standing there next to me. I'm like, God, I hope she doesn't talk to me. I'm like sitting there looking to the left over at my computer screen. I look over like, God damn, you know. Like. <laughs> See, and, and that's that's cute as shit. And I can't believe that just because you looked at a pair of boobs, somebody would. I don't know. And I know women are like, some women are like, I take it as a compliment. And some women are like, you shouldn't, blah, 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 blah. And, and the thing is, is what do you see about a person first? visually yeah yeah what you like and what you don't like you don't know that person right off the bat Mm -hmm. so you can't say yeah she's got a great pair of tits but my favorite thing about her is she's a humanitarian yeah you fucking know that (laughs) yeah and like everybody's like well i got my thing my thing it's okay for women to have a body type or whatever but if a dude likes big boobs it's fucking over he's a pervert yeah it's so the double standard is insane i I mean, I used to think that I didn't have a type. Personality-wise, I don't, but I feel like I have a look. Dark hair, light eyes. It's always what I notice about a dude first. That's... If they have dark hair and light eyes. Dark hair for me, yeah, like... Would I, would I date a blonde dude with brown eyes? Absolutely, if he was my type. But then again, you know, talking about meeting people for Valentine's mm. Day, this is why I think internet dating is kind of a good thing. You get to know somebody before you start nitpicking what they look like. Yeah, true. And you get to step outside your criterias. Like, I once knew a dude that only dated chicks with small boobs but bubble butts. Who the fuck? See, see, that always that always worked uh, better for me uh, when dating a chick. Like, getting to know him first. Because I'm not the type of motherfucker that's just going to woo a woman off of her fucking feet after meeting yeah, them for 30 minutes. She worth the effort if you two aren't compatible. Yes. You know? So it's like this girl I'm talking to now. It is it, it is what it is, but we built a relationship to get there through talking on the internet. So right. I agree with you. Yeah, you get to know that person a little bit more. Bert and I talked on the phone. Because I met Bert online. Mm-hmm. Bert and I talked on the phone for 
three weeks, almost four weeks before we met in person. So, we already had yeah. a relationship. Yeah. It, 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 I think it works great. Yeah. Because, like, especially for a guy like me, like I was saying, like, I need Shy, to. Shy. Yeah. Get doesn't to know like the person. to approach. Yeah. And then, then like, there's a foundation there because. There's a, there's a I'm, comfortable feeling. Yeah. I'm not going to convince somebody to like me within knowing them for an hour. I, I'm a person that you got to get to know and I got to open up. And, yeah. You know. And, like, another thing, too, and this is why internet dating is the worst. People that are surprised that they can't meet anybody, but they're fake as fuck when they meet people online. Mm -hmm. Don't lie about shit. Like, I hate when women lie about what they're into to get dudes' attention. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, I thought we were great for each other. No, you're not, Sharon, because you lied to him about everything. You're not into fucking metal. You're not into sports. You don't know a fucking thing about baseball. You don't, you're not into cars. You don't even know what a fucking carburetor. You know, they <laughs> selling all these lies and stuff and dressing different, acting different and shit. And then they want to want, they wonder why. The relationship doesn't work. You weren't even you when you went into this relationship. Because it's all going to come out sooner or later. Yeah. I don't... Like, if, if I was interested in a dude and he's like, oh, I love... Hold on, I'm trying to figure out. I love Thai food. I'd be like, I'd be willing to try it. But between me and you, I'm a wuss when it comes to heat. And Thai is pretty hot. So mm -hmm. I don't think I can handle it. Never even tried it. It's pretty good. There's absolutely no reason why you have to have every single thing in common with a person that you cannot just tell them it's not for me i know and it's part of the whole game of dating and i hate the fucking game the trying to convince somebody to like you trying to be something you're not trying to it's just all fucking bullshit i, yeah. I hate it it's not and I, I i know some people consider it a downfall but i like how fucking honest i am i like how it like hurts my soul to not dig into the truth and find things out and to say things yeah. to have that sitting on me and if i don't say it i'm gonna pop dude that's who i am and you know i feel like i have a lot less shit to deal with than other people because i'm like that mm -hmm. and i have a lot less like failed relationships in the past my relationships have failed for big reasons not because there we separated amicably no that's usually not what it is because I am who I am going into it. Hopefully that person is who they are going into it. So we've, I've never had any, oh, well, you know, suddenly there is no suddenly. You either know somebody or you don't. And the only way you know somebody is to be yourself. Yep, true that. But yeah, I tell, like, if I'm into something, I'm like, yeah. And somebody says, oh, my God, this is what I'm like, mm. If that's interesting. You can tell me all about it, but it's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. Like Bert, if he was into something and he wanted to go, he loves builders, building stuff. I find it interesting as shit. I'd love to be able to do stuff like that. But to be honest, if he wanted to go, they have all these maker fairs, right? It's like conventions for people to build shit. If he wants to go to that by himself, by all means, it's just not my thing. Yeah. I do like watching it on YouTube, but I'm not going to spend my Saturday afternoon talking pocket hole jigs and <laughs> what the hell's a pocket hole jig it's it's a thing <laughs> to be able to put a hole in like so bookcases link together to make it stronger mm -hmm. you put the little dowels in there and they fit together snug okay i just watching those fucking videos i don't like i watch it i watch i watch the youtube with him he watches a lot of stuff about computers i'm so so bad at anything technical Anything that has to do with technology or math, I'm fucking out. Bert's good at both. It's his thing, and he's allowed to have his thing. I can do makeup. Bert could give a shit about makeup. I like special effects makeup and horror makeup and pretty makeup. He could give a shit about any of it. But he deals with my spending habits when it comes to his makeup, or my <laughs> makeup, and I deal with his spending habits when it comes to his tools. It is what it is. Like, I'm sure not every chick you talk to is into toys. That's and why turtles. So I don't have a check. <laughs> but would you require a woman to be interested in turtles to date her? Um, like, I get that she would have to be okay with your turtle They habit. would definitely have to be okay with it. So, and with the level I want to get to with it, they'd have to probably fucking like them. Honestly, so. with the turtle thing, I don't know a whole lot about reptiles and turtles and everything, but mm. I would want to help you build shit. Like, plant 
stuff. Just a lot and of like, that. Like involved. jungle and atmosphere as hell and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you've seen my enclosure. Yeah. Yeah. That shit's cool. Like yeah. making making something look like an aquarium and stuff. That's what I'd be interested yeah. in. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fucking work. People just yeah. hey, turtle, turtle. <laughs> I'm like, nah, man, there's a lot that goes into that. Well, like, I mean, I think about. <laughs> I don't understand why one pet's more important. Like, okay, we have three cats. That's all Bert's thing. I'm more of a dog person. He's more of a cat person. Right now in our lives, we're both cat people. Why? Because we're being lazy as shit. I don't want a dog right now. Mm -hmm. Because if we wanted to just spur the moment, take the kids and go somewhere for a couple of days, we'd have to get a dog sitter. Whereas with cats, we just... Scoop the litter boxes, clean them out real good, put out a bunch of food and water, and take the fuck off. That's true. Cats are easy. Yeah. Our lifestyle, we have made to be easy. We'll complicate it later. Or not at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, sometimes I wish I was never, like, into turtles and just kept it, because, like, outside of that... It's a daily that, struggle. It is. But it also keeps me fucking sane, because you know how I think, and I can get into my head... This keeps me from doing that. So I've been a lot more fucking stable the past few years since I've been doing this. Like, not getting in my little depressive fucking droughts, but... Eh, it's whatever. the idle hands thing, man. Yeah, and... I can't sit still. I don't sit still. Even when I'm watching a movie, I'm up and wandering around. Yeah, I don't I don't chill anymore at all. <laughs> you like your fucking turtles. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I don't understand why people make... Like, at what point did a certain pet become nerdy? Eh, I don't know. Some people give me shit. A lot of motherfuckers at work do, but eh, whatever. I think all kinds of animals would be good as pets, but they would put it be a lot of work. Like, yeah. I would like to have a skunk. Yeah, skunks. that's a lot of work, but I hear they make great pets. That's, uh, yeah, they. That's what I've heard as well. I think otters are the cutest fucking thing ever. Ever, but I hear that you have to have like two because they get lonely and their life expectancy can be like shorter if they're not with a pair. Mm-hmm. So then I'd have to commit to two, and then that's a lot of work. And then like a fox, but then like they tear up shit, and it's like having a dog. No. Pro- it's it's the benefits of having a dog and a cat, but it's also the downsides of having a dog. And then they chew up shit, and they pee all over stuff, and they mark territory, and they claw <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, mentally, I think it would be great, but also I don't want the response. I have I have two kids to be yeah, responsible yeah, for. I need yeah. easy pets. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, my turtles are my kids. So, and I don't think that's any weirder for you to say that and somebody be like, my dogs are my kids. Well, I've got I've got a dog too, but yeah, yeah, and she's your princess puppers. She's a beauty. <laughs> that's who I'm spending Valentine's Day with, by the way. Princess puppers. That's right. Uh, Valentine's Day, Bert will be working second shift still, and I'll be here by myself. I'm gonna get off and bring her some dog treats. <laughs> so I do. We will buy like special fancy soft food for the cats for holidays. We don't throw them, like, birthday parties and shit, but... (laughs) I need to have one for Leia this year. Throw her a fucking kegger. (laughs) I mean, it's an excuse to party. Yeah, she likes hanging out with us, right? Except for she almost killed my sister that one time. Fuck you, Terry. Violent violent game of of tug-of-war that ended in scrapes. (laughs) But, um, it doesn't bother me that Bert's gonna be working. Like, I'm gonna sit here and do the same thing I do every day. It's it's, it's, it's a day. Mm Mm-hmm. He'll go to work, and I'll get on Twitch, and I'll watch my streamers that I like, and that'll be it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if I don't get on Facebook that day, I probably won't even know it was fucking Valentine's Day. I mean, I had to look it up. Yeah, I mean. (laughs) I don't even know. Same thing for Mother's Day. Like, I get. I get it. But, again, the double standard. I feel like people make more of a big deal about Mother's Day than they do Father's Day. Yeah. And then... Chicks wonder why dudes only get their kids every other week. You're not involving them. Mm-hmm. You Women treat men like they're an unneeded parent. And technically, they kind of are if you're strong enough to be a single mother. But they're still a parent to that child. And if you want them to care as much as you do, you have to involve them. Yeah. But again, Bert and I don't do anything. We're a parent every day, all day. I don't need anybody. I mean, Bert already pretty much cooks on the weekends anyway. So he doesn't have to get up Mother's Day Sunday and make me... The only thing I don't want to do is fucking cook or do dishes. And that's almost every Sunday, so... Yeah. 
Fuck Sundays and Mondays. I mean, we have gotten each other things. I've bought Bert good things for his birthday, but, but also we're adults too. If we want something, we just go fucking buy it. And honestly, how much shit do we need? Yeah, really. He collects beer steins. Every now and then, I'll get him a beer stein. Tools. Every now and then, I'll be like, "Hey, baby," and I'm like, "Ah, fuck it, get it." You ain't bought anything in a while. Get it. Yeah, don't get hobbies. Never ending. Indeed. Cost a lot of money. Another thing I'll be doing on Valentine's Day is probably buying more over the counter drugs. I'm not back on the quill yet, but in case anybody can hear my voice, I am sick again. This is what happens kindergarten. My sister ended up in her daughter's first year with kindergarten. Strep. Something that I had never heard of called hand, foot, and mouth disease. Disease. Apparently it's some sort of virus. They were sick a bunch. Uh, her daughter ran a fever for six days and nobody knew why. Mm-hmm. It's like a new virus. Um, so I knew this was coming and we've already been sick four times this year. I've spent about $300 in over the counter snot medicine (laughs) and sugar free cough drops and nasal spray, (laughs) which I hate, but it's the only way I can sleep. And I may or may not have developed a, um, a need for NyQuil. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm just going to stick to the Tylenol this go around and try not be on the quill. Try not. Yeah. That's going to be your next, uh. New Year's resolution. No fucking quill for a full year. Well, I hate when people, like, because, you know, I'm, I'm energetic and I talk with my hands a lot. And people, like, and I'm always, I'm always out of bars, but I'm never drinking. But people assume, like, when I go out, I'm drinking. No. I'm showing up sober, I'm leaving sober. I just like to go out and have a good time and get out of my house. <laughs> my house, which most people go to work and they're so looking forward to coming home because it's their sanctuary. My house is also my job. I need to leave this thing sometimes. They all assume I go out and party and whatever. I don't have the ability to party anymore. Even if I have not a drop of alcohol, if I stay out too late, I wake up with a hangover the next day. Yeah, I've, I've actually um, acquired that hangover. Like, I've noticed that lately. If I don't get to bed before two, I feel like shit. Yeah. Like <laughs> I quit smoking and I don't drink and I still wake up on Sunday morning feeling like shit if I'm not in bed by like one. Yeah. I've noticed that recently for myself. Hey, it's fucking weird. But I love when people like act like I'm this big party or whatever. I always use this example. Like, people that do drugs and drink a lot are used to it. Like, it takes more for them to get high. It takes more for them to drink. Their bodies are conditioned for these things. I've been injured a couple of times in my life where I've had to have prescription drugs. I have to break Vicodins in half because they're too much. It's like crack for me. And I can only take, like, a full one a day. So if I'm hurt or whatever, I have to take half in the morning and half before bed. I can't take any more than that or I'm fucked. A shot of NyQuil will put me down. I am not conditioned for drugs. So Just like hitting that NyQuil. A shot of that NyQuil (laughs) does me just fine. When you talk about a cheap date, I am as cheap as there is. Ship with a fucking brown bottle, uh, brown bag full of fucking NyQuil. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, you know how some girls are all sassy as shit in their 20s want to experiment? A friend of mine had her tonsils removed. Or was it her tonsils? Anyway, I don't know how the fuck she ended up with it. But she got a prescription cough syrup. I don't know if it was bronchitis, pneumonia, or her tonsils, whatever. Like codeine or yeah, some shit? This yeah, this prescription cough syrup with codeine in it. And once she was feeling better, she still had half a bottle left. (laughs) So she's like, let's do this. And I'm like, seriously? (laughs) So her and a couple others were drinking this and trying to get, like, I don't know, stoned or feeling good or whatever off the cough uh, cough syrup. And I'm like, you guys are retarded. (laughs) It's all about the quill, bitches. (laughs) And then, I know you had to hear about this. This is back going around when we were in high school. Did you ever hear that if you took, like, a certain amount of... Coracedans. Do you remember the Coracedan HB thing? It's like a cold medication for people that are on blood pressure medicine. I didn't hear about this. Uh, yeah, if you took a certain amount of Coracedan HPs or HBs or whatever at a certain time that you would trip, almost every single one of my friends tried it, and almost every single one of them ended up with no buzz puking their fucking guts out. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are fucking retarded. And then when these idiots realize that you could buy those caffeine pills at the gas stations and stuff, they do like four of them and feel like shit. I'm like, God, 
Don't you just think experimenting with shit is is not cool? It never fucking works. Just to catch a little buzz. Yeah, it's not. It's never been worth it to me. <laughs> but I guess you know some people are more into experimentation than I am. But when we were getting ready to do this, I looked up some like horrible Valentine stories because nobody cares about the good ones. Yeah. All right. Yep. Most of them were people being cheated on and. People getting food poisoning. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and the ones that were just, oh, he forgot about it, blah, blah, blah. Most of them still ended up being together still. Like, they would be like, yeah, he forgot this and that and the other and blah, 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 blah. But we're still together. People make mistakes, man. It doesn't, your, your Valentine's Day does not have to be a fucking Disney movie. Yeah. I mean, life isn't a fucking Disney movie. No. We got to get up. We gotta get dirty. Yeah. We gotta raise our kids. We gotta go to work. We gotta pay our bills. Yeah, I mean, you know, we feed our pets. Somebody forgets. It might not be that they fucking meant to. You know, life happens. Shit, get people get busy. Bert and I didn't even celebrate our wedding anniversary for the first time until this year. No. I mean, yeah, we're happy we're married <laughs> until it pisses me off. Mm. But yeah, I just I spend every day with them. No one day is more special than the next. Yeah. Unless, like, hey, we won the lottery or something. You're going to Ireland. Yeah. It was, like, something to look forward to. Or we won the fucking lottery. That would rule. That would really that would really be awesome. We already have plans. We know exactly what we're going to do with all our money. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. We have plans if we hit the little ones, and we have plans if we hit the big ones. I don't really have any plans for the little ones. Like, for the little ones, we would get our house and pay off all of our debt and probably pay off our parents' debt. But, like, the big ones, we're going to buy land and we're going to put one road on it and a (laughs) cul-de-sac. And then we're going to build houses for all of our favorite people and move our favorite people onto that street with us. And it's going to have a clubhouse and a pool and everything. They won't be your favorite people once you're living Right, that's what I'm saying. But... I mean, I would rather have people... And the houses are going to be fall apart. We ain't going to be looking in each other's bathroom neighbors. But I would rather live on a street with people I like than don't like. Yeah, just a bunch of random fucking And assholes. because it's our property, if they got to go, they got to go. 30 days and you're bounced from our street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's how you break up with family members. <laughs> Kick them off your fucking land. Yeah, get off my land. Go get an apartment, you asshole. And then, of course, pay off everybody's debt. Which some people have more debt than others. Like, the people that were stupid aren't getting a lot of debt. <laughs> yeah, for... <laughs> like, I'll pay off their car and their mortgages and shit, but if you just ran up a bunch of credit cards, you can go the fuck on. Yeah, stupid fucking credit cards. My sister made that mistake bad when she first turned 18. She had a shitload of credit cards, and even though my sister is a pain in the ass, she paid every one of them fuckers off and cut them all up. She doesn't have a credit card to this day. Yeah, well, once I get out of mine, I will never use another credit card. I've never had one. Yeah, they're bad news. Uh, Bert has one for work and for emergencies, and that's it. I've never had one, and I never will. If I hit the big one, obviously I'd move to Florida, build my tortoise compound, but then I'd buy like a, a fucking tour bus and travel the entire United States. And obviously I'd bring people with me, whoever wanted to come, and I guess I'd, you know... They'd probably have to go back to their normal lives, so buy them plane tickets to fly them out from wherever the fuck we were at. You'd take me on vacation, right? Oh, yeah. I really fucking deserve a vacation, bro. Yeah. I've never been anywhere. All right, so say the wa- the lottery was won and you got to go on your vacation, where would be the first place you would go? Originally, I would be able to answer that straight up and say Australia. That'd be a cool place to go. But the more Animal Planet I watch... The more I realize (laughs) everything, everywhere. It's not just like you go out into the bush and there's shit that can kill you. I get that, right? It's like safari in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. If you're on safari and you get eaten by a lion, that's your fucking bad. You went to go see lions. Yeah. But literally everywhere, in your home, in the cities, there's fucking every spider, (laughs) every snake that's in these people's houses and apartments and shit is poisonous. I'm not afraid of spiders and snakes, but if it can kill me. And then they have, like, tie pans and shit and all this fucking, and it's crazy poisonous and you'll die instantly. And then I'm like, no. Yeah, Australia is a very diverse place. (laughs) 
And, like, I watched streamers from Australia. They had, like, like a crazy, insane fucking heat wave. And then I guess, I don't know if it's in certain areas, you can't use air conditioning because the grid will go down or whatever. So then they're just sitting in their fucking ball sweat dying. And it's like a million degrees. And then as soon as the heat breaks, they have floods and shit. And I'm like, I don't think, I'm thinking like, I don't know, Canada. Canada, really? I mean. You got Europe. No. You've got fucking. It's probably going to be New Zealand. Yeah. Ireland. If you fucking picked Canada. No. It'd be, it would be, it would be New Zealand, Ireland, Scotland, areas like that. But then also, too, like, I watch the news on top of Animal Planet. And, like, there's certain areas in, like, London and shit you can't go anymore. Why? Muslim immigration and stuff like that. Like. Like, they set up their little, like, Chinatown. And as a woman, that makes me nervous as fuck. I mean, I hate to say it, but it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, Muslims over here in America, they're... I mean, I hate to use the word, but they're integrated, right? They, they They get that they're sharing beliefs with other people. And, you know, I don't have to live by their rules over here. So I don't have to cover up. And they can't, you know, do anything to me that's sexist because... Like, they're on my turf, but over across the creek, I'm on their turf. And as a woman, that's kind of fucking scary, because there's no Muslim rules that says that I even have rights. Not I even mean, in England? And- not, no, because, I mean, if you watch the news and stuff, like, there are parts of London that even Londoners can't go in anymore. That's fucked up. I mean, but, I mean, it's the same thing. It's like ghettos in America and stuff. Like, cops won't even go in some bad areas. Yeah. I mean, and then, like, out here in, like... In, like, Claremont County, Ohio, there's some, like, meth areas that the <laughs> cops won't even go in because everybody's high as a kite with exploding fucking meth labs and shit. There's areas everywhere. Um, I can handle the drug shit because, you know, I, I can get a carry and conceal, but when it comes to, like, large groups of people that hate me just because I'm a woman, yeah, that makes me a bit fucking nervous. As long as I ain't messing with nobody's drugs, most people out here don't give a fuck. But, yeah, yeah. Like, if I'm just walking down the street... White American uncovered female. I'm offensive as fuck, and I'm like, you know what? Do I even need this in my life? I just wanted a vacation. Yeah, really. I hear uh, being a white American over in Europe is pretty. Uh, the pretty, fucking French hate us. Yeah, I mean, like you'll get shit in all yeah. the places. And like, I just like I, I want I want to learn. I'm over here not to like piss on your culture and stuff. Like if I was to go to the Middle East, as long as I was safe and shit, and like it wasn't kind of. I mean, I know like a lot of dudes aren't anti women. Mm-hmm. You know, I I know that. But again, like this is a harsh fucking climate, right? Things are not good right now. Yeah. Um, and they haven't been for a while. But I would love to learn about the culture. I had a Muslim fucking teacher. That taught French when I was in uh, middle school oh, and really? elementary school. Cool ass dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I just yeah, um, it's a shame. I know. Really I would love to learn about all kinds of people and cultures. I would too. I'd love to travel the world without any you know fucking issues. But I go to Russia. I'd be cold as fuck. But I mean, it seems like really. But then you watch movies like Hostel, and you're like, fuck that. Yeah. I guess it's just, like, what I see on TV makes it... And, like, I get that all the places aren't like that. And then I get that there's people in the Muslim culture that believe in doing no harm at all. But, <laughs> to anyone, ever, but, like, it'd be my luck to come across them... them <laughs> the, the, the bad motherfuckers. It, whether it's in Russia or the Middle East or... In it, France. And the thing is, it's like these people know where to find you because you're going to be in the tourist trap unless you know yeah. people in those places. So. Yeah. I mean, it would be good, but I don't know. I mean, I know a whole lot of YouTubers and shit that live other places, but I don't know yeah. people that live in other countries. Yeah, because it's like when we went to New Orleans down there on Bourbon Street, like all the drug dealers are down there because they knew where all the fucking tourists would be. But that's also where you could have got fucking robbed, raped, or yeah. s- whatever the fuck, you yeah. know? So I just, it just... That's probably how it is when you go to Europe. Like, we know we know where the fucking Look, idiot if you Americans seem taken or hostile, yeah. you know what the fuck is up. Yeah. And they know what the fuck is up. They're not stupid. No. <sighs> yeah, some places I just... It, it, it'd be great if we could just fucking all get along. It would be nice. 
It would be great if you could just explain to somebody, I'm sorry, I'm American, so I'm ignorant. You don't have to be violent toward me. Just explain to me what the fuck is up. Yeah. And if it offended people, I would cover up my fucking hair and my boobs or what the fuck ever. But, like, you have to be calm with me for me to be calm with you. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't come out screaming at me and expect me to fucking be kind I mean, and work with you. It's the same thing. Like, I cuss a lot on the pod. I don't do that in real life. I don't go up into my teacher, in, into my, my kids' school and talk to their teachers like I do on the pod. Yeah. I don't go to funerals with my boobs hanging out, wearing red dresses or what. I mean, I don't have my boobs hanging out all the time anyway, but, like, there's certain things where, like, it's appropriate, right? And, like, sometimes I don't know. Like, I've never been there. Tell me. And if you respect me, hell yeah, I'll respect you. Like, if mm. somebody... I don't know. I met somebody in the in the Middle East, let's say, and they're like, "Hey, I'd like you to meet my parents, but they're very strict." Blah 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 blah. Would you be wearing to, willing to wear this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's how I live my life. If you're gonna treat me with respect, I'm gonna I, respect I will, you. Yeah, without any issue. Yeah, like, you know? but and but also too, it has to be both ways. Like this whole "Don't say Merry Christmas" thing. Mm-hmm. Look, I celebrate Christmas. Yeah, I'm gonna say Merry Christmas, and if you don't. That's fine. And, like, let's say you celebrated Hanukkah or, you know, I would make, first of all, it would be a rare occurrence. Mm -hmm. So I would make sure to say Happy Hanukkah and Kwanzaa to you because I would know. But if I don't know, I'm not fucking psychic. Yeah. And I don't profile people. I don't, I can't spot somebody who's Jewish. Can you? Well. I don't, I mean, if they're wearing the little guys. Yeah, yeah. The little, I don't even know what the fuck they're called. I don't either. Some of them came into work and. They had the, the little hair fucking twirls down the yeah, side. Yeah, I mean, that stuff you get, mm-hmm. okay? But, like, like the Amish, they all dress like that, right? So you can't, you can't spot them. But if somebody was out, and they're not Amish anymore, and they're not dressed like that, and they don't have the beards and the hair and the caps and the whatnot, I wouldn't fucking know. Yeah. I think that's a lot of the issues nowadays. People expect you to know disrespect. shit. disrespect. I don't know. And I don't know how to pro... I don't get online and be like, how do I tell the difference between somebody who's Mexican and Cuban? How do you tell the difference between somebody who's from Pakistan and from fucking Afghanistan? I don't think... I don't think any of us are that fucking different that I can be able to spot that. Mm-hmm. And if I could, like, that's reading way too much into it. I don't want to profile people like that. If you're going to respect me, I'm going to respect you. We're fucking human beings. Yeah. We got to do this bullshit fucking together. And life is bullshit. And it's getting a stomach bug and raising pain in the ass kids. <laughs> it's fucking hard out there. It is yeah, a motherfucker. I, I would be respectful if people respect me. But if somebody comes off with an attitude immediately, like that dude in the GameStop store. Oh, yeah. Like, I was looking for a fucking fight. Yeah, and I wouldn't fucking be cool with him like if he came at me like that now and now if he was like honestly wanting me to call him she fine do i agree with it no but i would respect that motherfucker till he's knocking stuff over and screaming at me and that kid that was working in gamestop oh my god the patient's on like he didn't lose a shit at all <laughs> i would have because he probably knew if she'd fuck him up <laughs> and like i i hate to say like i don't have to believe in what the fuck you believe in either you don't have to put your shit on me like, if I don't believe it, I don't believe it. I mean, I can respect somebody's religion. I don't have to believe in it. You would tell, oh, you worship Satan. That's fine. But I don't have to. No. Oh, what, you, you're a dude dressed up like a woman and I have to call you she. That's fine. I mean, it's just a fucking word. You still have a penis. You're <laughs> still a man. You would think. I just, that's what science says. I hate these people like you can't argue it's biology you know what since the dawn of fucking biology and in fucking high school courses yeah you can argue biology because it's science yeah no <laughs> can't argue fucking science but i guess you, you can't can argue math two plus two is five you know you, yeah yeah i can <laughs> argue math it's two plus two is not five okay so valentine's day i mean do you guys Personally, it's not my shtick. Go out and fight the fucking crowds so you can post your Facebook status or whatever the fuck you do. I think social media makes people liars. Yeah. It, it makes you paint a, a picture of your life that's not real or at least 
perceived to others. To me, social media is for sharing funny memes. And, like, I, I enjoy getting a glimpse of people's lives that I may not be in contact with a lot anymore or whatever, but... See, that's what I don't like about it. Like, I don't fucking care. I don't have time. I don't... I don't know. <laughs> I like seeing people's kids and... See, I, I that they're doing well and, and I don't give a shit about any of that. Like the only reason I have social media is to check sports store uh, scores, sports rumors, tortoises, turtles, and action figures. It's all I fucking care about. Well, <laughs> I mean, and especially I like to see people doing good that really deserve to do good. Especially like you know people that I that I know and I'm friends with. Now I don't let anybody on my shit. All my shit's marked private. If I don't know you. Yeah. You know? Like, I post negative stuff. Like, if I have a bad day... Now, I don't do it like those chicks do. Like, oh my god, blah, blah, blah. Like, people be like, what's wrong? I'll straight up post. And I'm not talking, like, overly emotional stuff. I'm talking, like, I'll post stuff for, like, I went to cook something, blah, 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 and I was cooking it for 20 minutes and it wasn't getting any hotter and I realized I turned on the wrong fucking burner. Or, um... Slipped and fell and bust my ass today. You know, stuff like that. It doesn't all have to be, I have a perfect life. I don't. My shit is frustrating. Sometimes I post shit that pisses me off. Sometimes it's good stuff. Sometimes it's just a day. Sometimes it's just a serene experience. I don't have to. T- These motherfuckers don't. My life is not perfect. And it doesn't have to be. My relationship is not perfect. Bert and I have been together seven years and he still doesn't know which basket's the dirty laundry basket. <laughs> He still can't put any of his fucking tools away. <laughs> I just now, after seven years, trained him to clean up the streaks he leaves in the toilet. <laughs> and I ha- and if I don't refill the bottle, the spray a fucking pine saw, he won't spray off his streaks. <laughs> if I don't do that, he won't take care of it. But if I leave a bottle of cleaner in there, he'll fucking clean it. <laughs> I don't think he knows how to properly scrub a toilet. Um, I think he's maybe scooped a litter box in this fucking house like five times, you know, but he brings me fucking chocolate and peanut butter and a Coca-Cola when I need it. And he deals with my bullshit and my stories and me venting. He's learned that just because I'm screaming at him doesn't mean that I'm screaming at him. (laughs) Sometimes I'm just screaming because it has nothing to do with him. I just need to get it out of my body. He deals with that well. Nothing and nobody's perfect. Do you ever think that people, the reason why it's like almost an epidemic, why everybody's on fucking meds for depression and anxiety is because social social media kind of ex- like puts out a message that if you're not perfect, you're fucked. There's Absolutely. something wrong with you. Yeah, without a, a doubt. I've I've found myself in those wormholes. That's why like I don't really follow anyone anymore mm-hmm. I, because it's just like all you see is all these like perfect happy moments. And it, it usually there's nothing but a fucking feed of them. When you're having the worst day of the fucking month. Yeah. You know, so I'm just like, don't need this in my life. I just want to log in, check, like, shit that matters to me. I don't want to yeah. know what everyone's fucking doing or how they're perfect their fucking families are. I just want to do me. And and social media is a great avenue for things and seeing new things. Yeah, like, I like, like to learn stuff. Yeah, and it is great for that, and that's what I like using it for. Nobody's really even fucking social on it, at least the, the people I know. So it's like, well, yeah. if you don't really interact with me, there's no reason for me to fucking even be following your bullshit. Like, yeah. I, you know, so, I don't know. And I, I get on every day because there is... Lots of shit I can learn or keep up on. So. See, I fall into loopholes. So right now, the videos I can't get enough of on Facebook are this DIY home talk. Mm-hmm. And it's just like little household projects. And I love that because I like to do little stuff. And maybe there's an orga- organizational thing that will help me keep track of my shit. And, and-, and see, and without social media... Do we ever stumble across that? Like, that's what I like it for, you know? Like, finding those avenues. Yeah, like, um, one time... I got oil on a brand new shirt. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, there's no way this is coming out. And then I was like, wait, I saw one of those five minute craft videos on Facebook that if you put baby powder all over it and just leave it and then wash it, mm-hmm. the oil will come out. Came right out of my fucking top. Yeah. And I have learned so much shit about turtles and tortoises through fucking social media and other people having them as keepers and what to do and not to do and you know uh. another thing i think with the whole stress and anxiety thing one 
I think people feel like there's something wrong with them because it seems like there's something wrong with everybody. I bet you half the motherfuckers on my Facebook that are always posting about their anxiety disorders and shit Mm -hmm. don't even, have never even been to see a doctor about it. Probably not. They're just stressed out fucking, you know, whatever. And then they're like, oh, my anxiety, they ain't got, everybody's fucking anxious. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I get a, I'm anxious my cat is on the table right now because he might knock something the fuck over and piss me off. I think some people get it worse than others. Uh, but, you know. I, I understand that there's people on this planet like with depression. Their brains literally cannot deal with shit. Mm-hmm. But it takes away from them for these other people to be like, oh, depression. You ain't even been to a doctor, bitch. Yeah, like I don't think going to Facebook to post about it is the right way to Helping deal anybody. with it. Oh, yeah. it's triggered today. I'm triggered every day, but yeah. you motherfuckers talking about you being triggered. There's somebody out there that needs help. And you're just like, hmm. Puddles. Yeah, I think piss me off. Facebook's the worst place to go with your issues, but yeah, yeah, and all this social anxiety sh- shit. But you post on fucking to strangers all day long, mm-hmm. and I feel like they take more stock in what strangers say than the people around them. And I feel like people could take a good lesson from this: just because you can get in under others people's business doesn't mean you should mind your fucking business. Just because something's stressing out. Like, somebody's stressing out about... If it has nothing to do with you, why the fuck do you care? Mm -hmm. People get stressed out over situations and fucking people and that have nothing to do with states, countries away, and they're stressing out over it. You ain't even got to deal with it. Mind your fucking business. Oh, there's a water... You ain't even there. People minded their business, there'd probably be a lot less... Like, it gave gave you a world of opportunity, but it also gave people a world of stress. People give too many fucks about too much shit they don't need to be giving fucks about. Yup. It's insane. Like, why are you worried? Like, donate some money or something or what? Oh, well, this person and blah, blah, blah. That's great. I mean, there's some shit you should be worried about. Like, all those news feeds, dude, the shit that they post... So, like, I just saw another one the other day. It says, ladies, if you're ever out and you hear a baby crying, under no circumstances, do not approach the baby. So, you know those babies that cry that they give you in, like, parenting classes and shit? Mm -hmm. Fucking rapists and shit and human and and sex traffickers will put them in, like, a dumpster or garbage can and you hear a baby crying, you go to fucking rescue it, and then your ass is kidnapped and raped and fucking murdered. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Jesus Christ. So, like, shit like that's fucking useful. That would put some stress on a motherfucker. Now you can't even rescue a baby or you might fucking die? God. Like, that's some stress. That's something to worry about a little bit. But, you know, you ain't got to fucking think about it. Like, all right, I hear a crying baby. Call 911. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Go into a crowded building and fucking call 911. Like, and then, like, but sometimes these people don't even... Shit happening in other countries. Oh, well, I mean, it's good to care, but you ain't got to stress out about it. There's too much shit. You know, too much shit. Human brain's only capable of holding in so much shit. Let it go. Mm-hmm. Oh, well... My second cousin, third, twice removed, has cancer. That's great, but it's modern medicine. You barely know them, and they're going to probably be fucking fine. Yeah, that's... It just gets too overwhelming, and it's like you got to weed this shit out and just concentrate on things that fucking matter, not like all this other bullshit. I only stress out about what the fuck I can control. Yeah. That's my immediate family and the people I talk to every day. Would I be upset if something... Uh, yeah. we. I mean, we just had a friend pass away at the end of this fucking year that we hadn't talked... How many years have been since we talked to her? It's a while. Two, three years? She passed away. It fucking destroyed me, but I, you cry about it, you grieve about it, and you get the fuck over it. You can't control everything with everyone everywhere. Mm-hmm. She didn't pass away alone. She had family and friends and shit. It's out of my control. Can I be sorry? Yeah. Can I care? Can I have compassion? Can I have empathy? Yeah. Do I need to stress out over it? It's out of my control. There's shit in my everyday life that's out of my control. I ain't got to stress about it. Yeah. I can pay the bills today, and I'm living and breathing today, and I'm mostly healthy today. That's it. I fucking worry about shit all the time. Yep. Just try to live in the moment. I mean, yeah, we got a plan for the fucking future, but... God. Everybody's like, oh, the way the future's going. Yeah, you're kind of doing that yourself, man. 
posting your bullshit on fucking Facebook. Oh, I'm going to like and share this, even though I didn't look into it at all. <laughs> Here's my thing. This is how something on the internet becomes real. If you Google it, and the top ten websites that pop up say the same, same thing, it's fucking real. Mm-hmm. Okay? If there's any room for error in those first three web, and I'm not talking about the websites that say ad in front of them. I'm talking about genuine fucking websites. If there's any conjecture whatsoever in those top websites, you might want to look into it a little bit more before you like and share and post shit. Yeah, really. The only thing I immediately share is missing fucking kids. Because it could be like, as soon as that pops up, somebody like, oh my god, I saw that fucking kid at Walmart. Boom, the kid is saved. Mm -hmm. I share those immediately. Even if it's a day old and that kid was found in his basement hiding from his parents because he's a little asshole. Which happened once. They're like, they found him, he's fine. Well, that's great, but I saw it and I immediately shared it because I care about kids. But anyway, like, read. God damn. Yeah, really? Like, did you know, and statistics are the worst. Did you know one out of every, yeah, no, no. That's how you get all these Facebook scientists, these fucking motherfuckers that aren't getting kids vaccinated and all these fucking government fucking conspiracy nut jobs i unfortunately know a few that post everything that fucking they see on facebook yeah, and, and, and then real. like all these hateful motherfuckers just sharing more and more hate getting more and more stress about it and deeper into their bullshit and they want to say they're a good person you're spreading hate mm-hmm. you're spreading bullshit why can't you be positive for a fucking change i mean my god i mean share a corgi video every now and then shit Corgis. that's what i do if I see some cute animals doing some cute shit, it's going up. Yeah, there should be more fucking cute animal videos. And that's what Facebook and shit is for. Home renovation shit and cute animal fucking shit. Oh, and Fail Army on YouTube. Watching people bust their ass is funny. Nobody gets really hurt. <laughs> I mean, people falling downstairs. Corgis walking downstairs. Cats that, you know, they're, oh, this cat is so agile. No, they're not. They miss jumps all the time. And it's funny as shit to see those videos on YouTube. Hmm. But no, it's all fucking hate and bullshit. And you can't post nothing without the comments blowing up. Oh, yeah. Fucking haters. Oh, so much hate. And all I want to do is watch Corgi videos. That's all you need in life. Just stay off fucking... Get on social media. Check your interests. Get and, off. you know, message us. Because we're yeah, positive shit. You know, well, that's like, yeah, I, uh, podcasts I follow. Things I'm interested in. Yeah, I mean, I comment on some other podcasts, too. But it's never. Look, if we go back to basics. What your mom taught you. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I like stuff that I completely disagree with. But people are allowed to have their fucking opinions, mm-hmm. man. I'm not going to trash them for it. Yeah, I usually don't. I'm just like, eh, fuck it. I'll and hide then it. And the stuff I totally agree with, I'm like, yeah, that was great. That, yeah, I thought, I totally agree. But then the stuff I disagree with, I just don't comment on it that's what i do i hide it i hide the page that shared it for it'll never pop up on my feed again and usually that's the last i'll ever fucking see of it and end of story i don't go out of my way to fucking stir the pot with these people and just fuck it and if people want to like people have commented on our stuff too and as long as they stay positive we can be friends in the second they're negative block i mean come on do we engage I mean, I engage. Or do, or do we block them if they? I mean, it depends on the subject. Yeah. Sometimes I'll stand up for myself and then block, which is pretty passive aggressive. But sometimes I feel like, like they, people don't understand me, and they need to understand that I do come from a place of love and what people act like I'm a fucking villain. I'm not a villain, <laughs> or at least I think people think I'm a villain. I've never really gotten any hate on any of my comments. Like I've commented things on YouTube videos and stuff, and some people get on there and disagree with me, and I'm like. You absolutely have every right to feel a different way. This is just how I feel. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a bitch about it. Well, but if somebody's going to be an outright dick to me, well, they're getting dick back. Fair enough. Goes back to our point. Respect me and I'll respect you. Yeah, Roadhouse, man. Yeah. Be nice. Until it's time to not be nice. Yep. If you want to disagree, you can disagree with us all day long. Fuck it, we got all the social sites. Tell us. Hey, it's Stephanie girl. I didn't appreciate That's fine. Yeah. You ain't got to agree. It's if Valentine's Day is your favorite holiday, will you get some, girl? <laughs> yeah, and you know, just because we're knocking Valentine's Day doesn't mean it's not a we're great s- holiday for yeah, somebody else. Yeah, sometimes it's somebody's favorite fucking holiday. Yeah, and, and fucking A, man. It's just like, 
the things we do and collect. It's not for everyone, but yeah. it's, this is this is a podcast where we express our fucking ideals and opinions. And we so. like to relate to people, but we also want to share a piece of ourselves too. This is this is an opinion podcast. We, we're talking about everything. We're providing information as well as opinions and yeah. some entertainment. Yeah, and if you do enjoy Valentine's Day, we would love to hear why. And yeah. Give us some insight. If you had the best Valentine's Day ever, let us know. If you had the worst Valentine, tell us your worst Valentine's Day. We'll like comment on it. We'll spread it. Like we're here. We're ready to engage in a positive. If you got some hate, shit to say, keep it to yourself. Yeah. I fucking do. I have shit to say. Every, I'm the most opinionated person. I know. I keep a shit to myself. Hmm. I keep that shit to myself unless I'm on the pod. But then I'm just expressing how I feel about things. I'm not. You know, the only people that I absolutely hate that should go to fucking hell and die <laughs> is people that hurt kids and people that hurt people just to hurt people. Like if you're fucking killing people and you're hurting kids and you're touching people inappropriately, you're a cocksucker. You need to be in prison or in hell. Yes. Everybody else, man, you're entitled to your hobbies and your. I mean, if you love taking it up the butt, be proud of that. That's a skill that some people don't have. Fuck yeah! <laughs> it is not. It is not in me to engage in any form of butt play. With, I mean, you're gonna make some man happy, lady. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. To each, I said it is not for me. That don't mean it ain't for somebody else. Yeah, we gotta live our lives. You guys live your lives. It's just how it is. And we like to hear about your lives too. Just because we're not into same shit, I am curious as fuck. Yeah. So if like ladies, especially because like I get why guys like it, butt stuff is just your thing. Let me know and explain to me why. I mean, I may not get it, but. Yeah. Shit. And if you got a good story or good reason, yeah. we're more than. A great, a great butt experience, a bad butt experience. We'll talk about it. Yeah, maybe even have you on as a guest to explain to us why. You know. We talk to the people. We do. We want you to talk to us more. Yes. I am. I have no job. I mean, besides the kids, which is... A lot of work. Uh, mentally draining. Like, and everybody's like, oh my God, you talk so much. No, I talk so much to you because my every day is interacting with kids. Yeah. I crave adult interaction because I can't talk to like deep seated issues and juicy stuff and butt sex to my kids. <laughs> I enjoy adult <laughs> topics, but what I talk about with my kids is. Being nice to people, having a shower properly, mm-hmm. uh, wearing good deodorant, uh, healthy diets, uh, baby shark do 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 do, and then like, <laughs> fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on! How much time we need to be on our tablets and our phones when bedtime is? Brushing our teeth, mm. making sure we get them chewing teeth back there. Your teeth are gonna rot out. I mean, that is fucking and 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 it's the same conversations with your kids. All day. I need a little variety in my life. Please message me about your butt sex. No judgment. No judgment. Potty (laughs) Mouse is a no judgment zone. Yeah, this is a no judgment. As long as you're not being disrespectful to us or anybody in our groups. Yeah. I don't care. If you're a thrill seeker, if you spend money like crazy, if you hoard money like crazy, if you're a hoarder, if you're hoarding turtles, (laughs) if you're holding chihuahuas, Terry. Save the animals. If you love animals, hey, I don't even, like, people that hate animals, fine. If having a pet's not for you, if you can't deal with the dander and the hair and now, you're allergic to everything. Now, now see, if that's fine, <laughs> I feel like hating humans is fine as well. <laughs> right, and see where I, I still, I still believe in the goodness of people. I feel like it's it's rare, but I feel like there are genuinely just good fucking people on this planet i know you've given up brad i have given i know up. you've given up but like some people are allergic to you don't have to like animals just don't adopt animals like if you're not going to take care of it don't adopt it that's the only thing i have with people like if you if you're lazy as fuck don't get a dog you're not going to walk it it yeah. will suffer you know mm-hmm. if uh, you're broke don't get an animal because they need to go to the vet when they need to go to the vet not on your payday yeah, true that. You know, that's the only problem I have. You know, don't hurt animals or you're a cocksucker. But you don't have to love them. You can think animals are dirty and whatever and you don't want anything to do with that in your clean space. Hey, I applaud you, man. Every surface in my fucking house is covered with cat hair. I could open a brand new bag of fucking popcorn there's a fucking cat hair in my mouth. I hate humans. 
(laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Well, I will interact with the humans on social media, which is Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Yes. Instagram's been kind of where it's at for us lately, but I check our Twitter and our Facebook constantly. So wherever you, you can email us to, Mm -hmm. uh, potty mouths. Yeah. It's just potty mouths at Gmail. Gmail Gmail.com. Yep. Shoot and us an email. Got any ideas? Yeah, because we're, I mean, we'll talk about anything. I mean, I'd like to leave the hot topics out of it, like politics and stuff. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we just can't help but open our fucking mouths. I mean, this is supposed to be for entertainment, for like when shit is pissing you off and you're sick and tired of negativity. You're like, those pouty mouths guys don't take anything serious. I'm going to listen to them because we really fucking don't. Like, life is meant to laugh. I mean, there's some shit you shouldn't laugh at, but not really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a funny context for just about everything. If you're open to it. If you're willing to just laugh at shit. Plus, laughing burns more calories. This is true. I giggle quite a bitch. I should have a rock and bod, but I don't. So besides social media, you can find our episodes on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and Google Play in the music section. I have to specify that. Because sometimes people are like, Google Play, Google Play Music is where the podcasts are. Oh, also, we if anybody knows, we're going to try and get on iHeart. Because iHeart has been plugging their podcasts like crazy. Really? Yeah. So also Podbean and the Podbean app. Also, props to Podbean. Like almost I don't know, two, three times a month, they'll throw us in Recommended. Really? And I feel like they throw even smaller podcasts up there in the Recommended and I feel like Podbean's fantastic for doing that. Yeah, and if you're listening to us, please rate us or yeah, subscribe rate. because rate, that subscribe, w- follow. Yeah, that that would help us out a lot. Because then we then we would know that you guys like us, and it would begin the interactions and long term friendship of us talking bullshit and you guys commenting on it. Yeah, because we do that very well. But also, we would like to thank Purple Planet for our music. We use Purple Planet for 99.9999999% of all our music. And they have great music because I like to throw some jazzy tunes in there every now and then. Well, Brad does because Brad edits. (laughs) I'm just like, this sounds great. Do you agree? And Brad says, yeah. And I'm like, let's do it. Yeah, you usually do a pretty good job picking them songs out. See, I'm good with like ambiance and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, that's where I succeed. I feel like that's where I excel. I may not be good with, I may not be able to technologically put that shit in there, but I can pick it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you can. So, I don't know how many of these we're going to have to roll solo while Bert's ruining everything being on fucking second shift. You should be back soon, right? I mean, we got... I know we're gonna two more two and a half more weeks to go. I think. Yeah, we're we're meeting with him Friday, so yeah, yeah, he'll be he'll be on one the episode after this, but yeah, we I, may only have to do one solo, but yeah, as long as he doesn't ruin things, he'll, he'll be back shortly. <laughs> uh, also, should we should we let him know about what we're working on, or should we wait for that till later? What are we working on? Patreon page. Oh yeah, we're yeah we can talk. We're working on a Patreon page. Yeah, so if you dig us and all, we're we're gonna hopefully be bringing you some bonus content here soon on our Patreon page. Uh, once we get that more evolved, we'll we'll have more information on that. So stay tuned for that as well. We're always in a state of evolvement and improvement. Yes, we're we have a a bare bones Patreon page, but we have big big plans. For our Patreon content, we were always, from day one, we were thinking about how big we would want, how much time and energy we want to dedicate to this. Yeah. And, and we like doing, we love doing the podcast. Yeah, we're, we're, we're having a good time, so so we're going to we're gonna up our game a little bit here in 2019, and hopefully you guys want to take that ride with us. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have more information about that. Yeah, our our Patreon page will be ever growing and expanding and evolving. And, so and lots of different content too. At least that's the plans of it now. Just you know, and don't forget that uh, to fall in love with us, you have to listen to us and engage with us. So please yeah. listen, comment, let us in your lives. We're letting we're 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 forcing our way into yours because <laughs> <laughs> we be forceful as hell. But. Uh, Enough rambling and bullshit. Uh, This is Stephanie. This is Brad. And good night, everybody. See ya.